beginning of 2001, he, uh, we, there, all the labels, we just did a demo and almost all the major labels were, were courting us, but American wanted to come up and see us on a, like, like, we'll just come where are you at? You know? So like, it was like, we're here the next day. So they came in it was the weirdest thing. This goes back to just, just the weird, but this guy walks, uh, we're waiting for the guy from the label and, and this guy comes to the door, this is old rehearsal studio where you had to, there's like a gate on the side and, and, and we're, he's knocking and we, and then he's all, is this where man-made God is? And we're like, yeah. He's like, hmm. He's all, <clears throat> the guy in my car right now says this is going to be a, a spectacular night. It's going to be an amazing experience. I'm like, like, who are you? He's like, oh, I'm his driver. I just wanted to make sure this is the right place. He's really excited. Give me some magic happening here tonight. Like, that was weird. And then dude comes in. It's Dino Paredes. And I didn't know who he was. And a skinny guy in all black suit like tailored just like like a pallbearer uh -huh. <laughs> and uh yeah so but he comes in and it was magic we, we the band had uh lightning in a bottle at that point we were totally you know writing songs like every day was a new song it seemed like it was like the, that that real rock uh something you know that you can't really hit much in your life this this moment was happening with us and he walked into it and it, the uh then after that, he's like, well, we're, two days from now, we're going to fly your equipment to Los Angeles. We're like, wow. What? You know, yeah, we're flying everything. You guys are going to play for Rick. You're doing a showcase. <laughs> and I didn't, I wasn't all that interested in being on American. I didn't really care. I don't think anyone did. I think we were all just like, whatever, dude. Like, you know, we're, we'll end up with a home somewhere. Because this is when major labels were still, you know, pretty strong. And, uh, and then we ended up doing it and meeting him. And it was an amazing showcase. And, um, as soon as it was over with me and him started walking out of the room and I, and, uh, he, I go, yeah, Rick, uh, I don't know if you know, but I was in that band forbidden. He's oh yeah. He's like, I tried to sign you guys, but your manager just turned me down cold. I'm like, <laughs> I know, like we didn't know until six months after you'd even asked. And he's like, really? He's like, wow, that's, that's interesting. And I just said to him, I go, Hey dude, I think we're probably the right fit for each other, you know? And he's, I think so too. I'm like, no, we should probably get it done. He's, I think so too. And then it was done within two weeks. And we were, you know, a month later, we were in LA doing pre production. Wow. So it was, yeah, it was just like one of those moments, like a, a pure, a pure belief in oneself uh, and the self of the project, really. Not just, you know, again, this is the people I was with. They're all amazing. You know, this is two, you know, Steve Jacobs that was in Forbidden was in that band as well. And uh, James Walker, my bass player, was phenomenal. And uh, the singer, Pan, was something else. And he was really, he was, it was, the songs in his voice were the real catalysts in his lyrics um, to making Man Made God what could have been so big that wasn't, you know. It just yeah. it imploded uh, kind of before our album even came out. It was almost over because we waited two years from the, the day we started recording. Oh, to the day to the day it came out. Not that we wanted to, but wow, the, label, the labels were in massive disarray at that time. This is all you know. You were probably three or four years old, but <laughs> at that time there was all uh, labels were being gobbled up by each other, and and presidents were being shoved off the side. And you guys, they, they said, "Can we just wait a few more months to put your record out?" And we were so tired of waiting. Well, no, big mistake. Uh, shot ourselves in the foot by just not letting them rework the record one more time before it came out. Wow. In, in a way that must have been nice closure from the combat days, you know, because like having that whole Rick Rubin thing hovering above you. And now it's like I got to like just talk to him and, and just from just doing well, we what spent, I want to do. You know, we spent a lot of time at his house. We'd uh, we'd go up there and work um, in his his uh, music study. And uh, if you ever seen pictures of his study as that giant bear that's in there. And I'd yeah. Sit right under the, yeah. I'd sit under the bear, you know. <laughs> And his dogs wow. would come up. They, they were like these little dreadlock or big dreadlock fucking dogs kind of stunk because they had dreadlocks. But uh, but he was super nice. And um, and he really did love the band, you know, uh, a lot. And he saw value in what we were doing because it was years ahead of his time, you know, like rival sons. Like you know, it was like way beyond you know, like that's what you can kind of consider it like now. But it was way beyond that because it was true rock um, and, and this is a thing like when you look back at my past 
how do you go from thrash metal to this? Well, because I really grew up on the Beatles and, and great classic rock stuff before I, you know, thrash ever existed. Like I, music was my my lifeline. So it all made sense and it all kind of came together. And it's tragic that it didn't happen, but it was meant not to because ultimately our singer, who was so great, was also never patient and didn't really understand how this business worked. And he, he was always uh, unsatisfied. So ultimately it was going to be like pushing an elephant up a hill and it was too bad, you know? Yeah. Uh, but some people, if they get too many things given to them too easy at first, then it becomes like, well, it's always going to be like that. Right. And no, it's not. It takes work. 